Como estas, amigos? This is Derek Country, and this is me doing a reaction for Chewie's Episode 5 Awards Night. After a year and a half, I finally fucking put it out. So, obviously, this was a project that I wanted to work on for a long time. And the shot here of the monitor going over, forming the animation. All the animated segments I've done myself, all three of them. Uh, this is one of the first shots that I saw where I got all these extras coming along, gathering for it. There's a lot of cheating in terms of making the space look more filled out than it actually is. Big shout out to all the folks who actually filled out for extras on acting. I really appreciate that. I had a little, nice little gag here about everybody hating the new cast of Red vs. Blue as well. I thought it was a fun idea. But obviously the central three characters of the episode are myself, Flick, and Blizz. So you'll see that we come in here and we're Liz looks for parking while me and Flick head in, and there's kind of an overarching idea about caretakers. But rather than me and Liz being caretakers for Flick, it's more so the fact that Liz is being the caretaker for me and Flick because while Flick is unpredictable, obviously I have this massive childish ego that's unregulated and unmoderated, so I need to keep that in check for the. The period of the episode, and I love this idea that you know the machinima community is foaming at the mouth or like you know popping at the bit to see what's going to happen with the oneself finale. But you know, Darius makes it all about himself in this episode, which I think is really funny. I think the whole idea about making the episode about my ego and me just getting completely walked on is really funny. So obviously, people are remembering me playing the character of Derek from oneself and giving me grief over that. And then you have Flick, who's just very passively let, watching all this happen as I get heckled and have stuff thrown at me and everything. And despite me, you know, pushing back against all this criticism, I still have this really fragile ego. So that's, I, I, I think it's a fun scene to have. And obviously, we move on from there to Blues entering the venue and kind of entering the foyer or the lobby area of the award ceremony before the show starts. And we have our friend Flick here talking about the Forgotten Spartans. And I've never watched the Forgotten Spartans or the Last Spartans or Rise of the Spartans, but I did get those two avatars that Flick is talking to from the uh, thumbnail from that from that old Machinima. That because I believe that was hosted on Machinima.com, unless I'm mistaken. So obviously Flick is too busy having a conversation, and I'm having a little temper tantrum. I wanted, I really wanted to bring in Beam because it kind of only felt right because he was in that kind of same group of mission content creators that were coming up around the same time I was. So Beam kind of walks by me and Blizz and continues into the award ceremony and then we have the first big animated scene which was the the applause. And this scene isn't that important. I wanted to kind of just establish a space with it so thankfully I think I had the blender file for storage here and I was able to kind of match those positions in the map with where me, Blizz, and Flick are. Regarding the position of all those Spartans and all that, there's a lot of posts on Twitter that'll have people say, Sam, you're OCs, and they'll do a big group photo of all these Spartans and elites, so hello OCs. I wanted to do the same thing with a video form, because that had never been done before. And I'll go into this a little bit more at the end of the video, or at the end of the episode, but I want to stay focused on what's happening on the scene here. Obviously, Flick wins best cinematography, and the, the the gag there is that you know oneself has this horrible wobbly camera that's still entertaining to watch, but I don't know if it would get best cinematography. And obviously, I'm tweaking out over the fact that I've gotten no awards, and next gen and oneself has been sweeping all the other awards. And then you have uh, these two delightful characters watching Flick collect his award, and obviously Flick isn't cocky or anything; he's just passively collecting collect, collecting the awards. Almost in a way that would lead you to believe that he doesn't care or that he's indifferent to it. And he gives me a little kind of smirk and I look back to him. So then we have the, I think it's the final award that is next, which is the best machinima. Kind of like how the Oscars will have best picture at the end. This whole episode is the machinima community and how it kind of, it could be a little bit gate kept and there's clicks and all that stuff. And I like the idea of just doing an episode around an award. That's just a total shit show with these unfunny hosts and me constantly bitching about what's going on. And I like all the animated transitions between each of the um, 
nominees as well. So it seems only fair that we have, you know, been nominated for Next Gen. Because that's been, he's been working on that for a while now. I think the bones of a decade, if not longer. Um, Next Gen, or sorry, one, a fixed life. One thing that really annoyed me is if you look at all the subtitles that come down to the corner, they're supposed to be centered. But for some reason, every time I would nest the sequence on top of everything else, it would keep moving it over to the right margin. I'm not sure why, but I don't think it's the end of the world. I don't think many people will care about it. But the rest of the episode turned out really cool. It's something I couldn't fix no matter what I did. Because I, I liked that animation that came up on the subtitles, but for some reason it kept forcing the subtitles into the bottom right corner. But it doesn't matter. The episode still turned out fine. Uh, I had to painstakingly mask that animation of the monitor going across as well, but I think that turned out good as well. If I could have changed anything, I probably would have put more lens flare on it, maybe. And those are all five nominees for the episode. Now, obviously, we find out the winner is 13B, I believe. Yeah, 13B for Fleeting Memories. And the whole joke there is obviously 13 didn't finish the series. He, he didn't even start it, really. So I thought it'd be a fun joke to that, you know, a cinema that was never even made with all the other ones that are you know, completed, you know, yeah, except for, you know, pandemonium. So, hey, 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 I originally had 13B's Reach character go up and collect the award, but there was a lot of powerful camera work that had to be done, because when you're superimposing in assets from one Halo game into another Halo game, the green screen mod was really helpful for this episode. But at times, there was time, there was instances where I could not make the the plate match up with the asset or whatever. So I kind of just said to go with static shots, but most of the time spent filming this episode was just getting all those shots of Halo characters with green so I could put into this. And I did it for every single character and I didn't even use it for all of them. Because if you look at the scene with all those clapping, I actually had done green screen shots of every single one of them. And I ended up not even using half of them because I didn't know I was going to do this big applause scene. Uh, and I just knew that I wanted to do the dance scene during the credits, which looks fine. But I think in the context of how that dance scene is set up with D27 asking me about the open bar, I think fits really well, especially with the music. I'm really happy with the music choice with this. So back to what's actually happening on screen is Vic having a bit of a meltdown after I march out. Desi punches out 13B and then he gives his little award speech. And I think everything just kind of comes to a head here because Flick gets overstimulated by the awards ceremony and starts attacking people. I have my little meltdown and I, and I march out. And it seems that the only person who's even relatively grounded in this entire situation is Blizz, who hasn't even made Mishinima. Someone who is just trying to babysit me and Flick at all times. So obviously Flick goes on a spree while Blizz calls me telling me you know, to come in with the net and the medication, which I think is pretty funny. If I, if I could have, I would have modded Halo and replaced uh, the gravity hammer with a, with a net or something, because that would have been really funny to put in. But I think with what's going on in the scene right now, I think it's enough just to kind of communicate the point with the panic and everything. And the, the, while it took me over a year to actually film this and make it happen, all these shots that I put out here are more or less how I saw them in my head. I don't want to jerk myself off, but it's kind of crazy to actually be watching it back because enough people had lost faith, especially the voice actors I got on board for this because they had handed in their lines over a year ago. I, I didn't think I'd actually be seeing this episode made. I don't think they even thought it'd be made. I lost touch with some of the voice actors and some of them hadn't completed their lines, so I had to recast, but thankfully for the most part, everyone who I contacted a year or so ago handed in everything, so I'm glad that happened. This bit here with um, me getting run over was a last minute addition while I was writing and editing it. I wanted to do a throwback to one of my first videos, which was Abnormality 3. And then we're obviously right into the credits there, which I thought, you know, it, it, it cuts really well into it. There's kind of references to all the other Chewies in here as well. Obviously, Desi being in the first Chewies, so he's in this one. In the second one, we have a lot of 
there's a lot of content about oneself, which kind of ties back to the second Chewies. With the third Chewies, you know, we have the character John here, who I was obviously a character at the start of the third Chewies. And then the fourth Chewies about the RP Discord. I'm not sure if there's anything in the top. Oh, yeah, Beam is there. I don't know. They're just, I know they're just characters and just stuff, but it feels like a lot of the other Chewies influenced this one. And I like that idea. So hopefully I'll be able to take some elements of this take this into the next Chewies, which is already written and it's being casted as I record this. There is one scene that almost directly relates to this episode. So other than that, it's going to be its own thing. Obviously, we had the dancing scene there, which I think ties in really well. I really hope people like that because it took a lot of time to put together, having to animate every single character, but also it took a long time to render. I think it was the bones of a week or something. And the same with the clapping scene as well. The, the, all the scenes with the monitor, the golden monitor, didn't take too long. Flick? And then we have this post credit scene with Blizz and Flick. Well, Flick is still flipping out and Blizz is trying to get him to, you know, come down or to calm down. And that, that line that Blizz says, you know, we were just shoving Tic Tacs up your... The full line was we were shoving Tic Tacs up your ass. But I had this cool idea for something similar to There's Something About Mary. No, you me, not something about it, you me and Irene, where we cut on the line to what the ne you think the next word is going to be because that blood sport thing does look like a bit like a, an, a, an asshole. So I just wanted to cut to that and hopefully the viewers will be able to put it together. But I'm recording this before the video premiere, so I guess we'll see. But I appreciate that Charlie coming in and helping with some last minute lines, you know, because this episode was written before I met Charlie. And you know, much longer before I recorded it. So, um, yeah. Now I'm going to. Oh, and then we have the caretaker telling me to turn off the lights and lock up afterwards, which I think is really funny. Turns off the lights. So yeah, I would normally end the recording here, but now we're going to do something a little bit different. I'm going to show you some behind the scenes on Chewie's Five. Okay, so this is the clapping scene that I did for Chewie's Five. I just wanted to give a little bit more insight into what's going on here. So obviously this is a this is a blender file of the map called storage. I'm sure most of you are from, familiar with it from Halo 3. I had a folder with all these avatars. And maybe if you submitted an avatar on my Twitter post that I had pinned for a good year and a half, you'll have seen your avatar here. Because I did every single one of them, with the exception of one person who submitted an avatar from Halo 5. They never got back to me about certain details that I needed from them, so I, I had to cut that. But everybody else's avatar is here. There are elites from Halo 3 that people sent me, and I couldn't put those in purely because at this point in time, there isn't a folder or pack for the Halo 3 elites with the MCC armor packs, which is unfortunate. But that is what it is. So what I did instead is I just did that, you know, that profile shot of all the characters with the Halo 3 elites there. And interesting enough, if you if you're playing as an elite in Halo 3 and you manage to glitch yourself without a weapon, there's a kind of an idle animation with no weapons, which I'm pretty sure is supposed to be for the the campaign elites, but it goes over to the multiplayer elites as well. The um, Spartans don't have that. They just have that silly stance without the energy sword. But yeah. I I So we'll, we'll go through the shot real quick. Um, I'll, I'll bring in the, the textures and materials in a second, but if we just go quickly go into the camera, you'll see that obviously it's a, like a dolly shot going through all the Spartans. And then it kind of has me shaking my head while Blizz and Flick cheer. And you can see the edges of the frame here. Anyone who's done Blender before knows what, what's going on here. But I wanted to give some coverage to some of the characters over here because I didn't I didn't get to cover them in the camera shot. Now, with the exception of this Elise, because this is, I realized very, or, or I realized during the production of this video that Reach Elite actually do work really well with Mixamo 
for model animation. I thought because of their frame with the hunchback and the DG legs or whatever that they would work, but they actually did work pretty well. So it's a pity that there, if there was a Halo 3 Elites pack on the Halo archive, I would have definitely used that because there, there's been a few projects I've worked on, namely RB Bull Season 3 and some of this video where I assumed, or even the credits for RB Retold Season 2 Part 1, where I thought that the Elites wouldn't plug into it, so I just skipped them. But if you take a look at this now and look at this Elite, like the stances, it's not perfect, but it's very rare that you'll get perfect one-to-one -one animation on Mixamo. Like, the clap of the hands passes, I think. I think it passes. I, I only did applause because I was coming up on the end of the production, so I didn't have a chance to try to deal with all these different, you know, animations. But uh, I want to show off some of these characters because I don't think I got to show them off in their glory. We kind of cut off at Blizz here, so let me load these materials and we'll look at all these characters. I put some, some of these characters were also taken from Twitter. Some of these characters were meme characters that I made. I didn't know at the time how often I'd be using this sequence of Spartans and elites clapping because in all fairness if I was ever stuck for a shot or a reaction shot of the crowd I had a bunch to use from I used one shot of the I all the extras that I had put in for the early shot or like red versus blue coming into the venue I had them come here as well and I had shots of them you know in the crowd while I had hosts there and if you look at my YouTube channel, my TikTok, Twitter, and Instagram, I had actually made a teaser where I used the shots of all the extras in cold storage, but um, it, it couldn't work because some people weren't playing on keyboard and they couldn't lower their weapons. Some people didn't know how to lower their weapons. Some people had different controller configurations on, and it's very, very difficult to get body actors to kind of take stuff seriously. So I, I ended up scrapping that footage, but I thought it was good enough for the teaser, you know? So I think this character here is Anchor McDaddy from Twitter. This is one of those, you know, there's a lot of ODST fans out there. I don't remember too many of these names. Uh, but if you see your character here, hopefully you recognize them. I think it's a scan man or something. So the the elite obviously wasn't anybody in particular because I don't think anyone submitted a Halo Reach elite for two E's five, so I just put them in there and I took some liberties with the colors on the materials. Like I just changed the the lights to red. You'll see this character here that I just had a field day with, and one mistake that I think I made with the episode is I didn't put them further left in the arrangement because with how I blocked out the shot of the camera, you never see them. Which was just, you know, that, that's, that's my bad, you know, on my behalf. So these are some of the characters. You have Blizz, myself, Flick. I think you have a lot of other characters. And I hope, I hope no one's sore about having their character in the background. But, you know, the, the majority of the characters that were part of Chewie's 5, or for the extras that people submitted, were Halo Reach. And... Well, Halo Reach, you know, looks great and, and, and the avatars look great. A lot of them kind of look the same. They all have this kind of gritty look. A lot of people, you can see, you can see right at the back, a lot of people like using dark gray and red. You get um, more of a, you get more variety with the Halo 3 ones, especially with the seasonal content. So you'll, you'll see that I use a lot of the Halo 3 ones in some cases. But the, the biggest thing I wanted to put out there with this sequence is that I wanted to show the variety of Spartans. And putting them into one space, I think, is really stimulating content. I like seeing this kind of stuff when you have Spartans from different eras in the one place. At the end of the day, like, people might not like the MCC seasonal content, but there's diversity there. And I, this whole sequence is all about the diversity and celebrating the diversity in the community, you know? So I think there was maybe one person who submitted a Halo 4 Spartan. But um, I'm glad that they did. Is our fingers not textured? Well, maybe it's still loading. But it's pretty sure it's textured in the actual video. Um, yeah, I got a Halo Infinite Spartan in there. It was going to be my one, but I used the wrong coating. 
So that's why I didn't use any green screen footage. Um, and in fairness, Hello Infinite is really good for using green screen footage as well. We have D27 there, Morgan there. I had to put some of my buddies in the front. No one submitted any Halo 2 anniversary Spartans, but I really want to get that in there. They do look diverse enough. And I think with that color scheme, it would, it's probably going to piss off a bunch of people just to look at. So I like pissing people off. I think that's funny. Got in. Uh, oh, yeah. Um, someone did. We had two people submit Halo 4 Spartans. The person who submitted the Halo 5 Spartan left me on red or whatever, or just didn't get back to me. But I really wanted to put a Halo 5 Spartan in there because I, I had the Halo 5 pack, right? So I made the most horrific looking armor I could. With the exception of the visor, I think this color, the, the green and the red looks really good on the armor. But other than that, I think the armor looks kind of horrific. I had to put the seeker in there just to rustle people's jimmies. But yeah, this was the clap scene. I don't think there's anything going on. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Look, if you look at this now, in, in the direction that they're facing, there's nothing going on in the direction that they're facing. But that's fine. You know, that wasn't that wasn't the shot. When you're doing Blender, you don't you don't fully realize the in, the entire space of the scene. You know, it's 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 almost impractical to do so. And if you look at behind the scenes on any visual effects stuff, you'll see that people are being resourceful with the space that they're given. So, I think there is a certain someone who I left behind uh, while showing off this scene, and that is of course our good friend of the channel. Captain Decimator Omega, who is sitting in the corner on his own with no friends. Now, that's funny coming from me, because the whole point of the episode is that I have no friends. But I just thought it was uh, funny to have that there. So, yeah, this was the... So, yeah, we will go to the dancing scene now. So, this is the dance scene from Chewie's 5. Uh, I wanted to have a scene that made a little more use of the avatars. The, the clapping scene was fine, but in terms of its orientation and what's going on, it's incredibly stiff. It's just, you know, it's just a dolly from left to right with everybody static clapping or hearing. There's not too much going on there. So I wanted to have something that was a little more fluid, something that made use of the space and kind of made people feel a little bit more at least the people who submitted their avatars, I wanted something that made people feel a little more involved with the story. So as a result of that, I all the all the work that I went through to clap, get the clapping and the cheering animations. And it, before I continue with this, I just want to say that you saw all those shots with people clapping and cheering in the previous sequence. I did that for every single character. So I did two. First of all, I had to rig the characters i had to you know put together their colors and their armor permutations i also had to go through and actually painstakingly <laughs> color them well not just color, i had to painstakingly put them through mixamo make sure the animation was right make sure the arm space was right and bring them in here so when i was putting together the characters i'd make these little packs these little blender packs that i'll show on screen now that will show It'll just have the character from the original Blender file that I got from Halo Archive. I put them into Mixamo once to run there, just to rig them for animation. I did one group of, yeah, applause, one group of cheering, and one of a dance. And I only ever did one dance. So, you know, it's, it's dozens and dozens of hours of work here. So... If you look around, you see everybody dances. It's a little choppy right now because there's a lot of stuff going on here, but one thing you may or may not notice, I don't know if I can throw it up here. Like the, you'll see that the, the space isn't that populated, right? I think this is all the characters I was given that I could rig. So again, couldn't do Halo 3 Elites this one time, but no one that crosses over, I don't think. I could be wrong, but I want I, I was very worried that you'd have, you know, because Blender doesn't well, Blender does do collision, I think, but I didn't have collision on this. 
So I was very worried that you'd have all these characters bumping into each other or rubbing off each other in a scene. So I took my time to go through this several times to make sure that no one was bumping into each other and they would show up on screen. And you'll see here that there's two kind of light fixtures or two lights that I have keyframed down here along the bottom of the screen. All they're doing is going around in circles and facing the floor. So we have a little bit of a disco effect. And I was hoping that in that scene for the video that people would at least be able to tell that it's still cold storage. So what I'm going to do now is I'm going to show people a little bit more of the characters because there's a lot of characters you can't see at the back end. While I'm happy with how it turned out, I know that people could be a little upset if they don't see their characters and all their glory. Mixamo has maybe two or three clapping animations and cheering. You only need to work off the two because you can change the energy and the arm space to give it a bit of variety. They don't look all too samey, but in terms of the dance animations, they have dozens. So I was spoiled for choice for this. So some characters I gave, you know, hip hop style handstand animations. Some characters I have doing, you know, more hip hop oriented stuff. Some characters I have doing kind of girly, not girly dances, but something more feminine, like snake dancing or whatever. You'll notice here some uh, models didn't exactly come out the way I wanted them to. They get stretched in Mixamo. It's not the easiest thing to fix, but for those those characters with the stretched out faces, I put them in the background just to kind of add the scene a little bit. So if your character is here, Hopefully you can see them. And like I said before, I wanted to show the diversity. So if you weren't one of the main characters in this episode, your, your character was kind of put at the back for the sake of showing the diversity, like the Uroi Spartan, Halo 4, Halo 5. And obviously I wanted to have my buddy D27 here. And I hope Morgan is visible there. I don't know if Morgan made the cut in the actual sequence because the light, the lighting isn't that big of a deal here because uh, that isn't rendered, but you could easily lose people. Uh, Blizz and Flick aren't here because they're supposed to be up on the ledge here having that discussion. So yeah, this is this scene. Uh, why did I put this character way at the back? Characters like this with the, the Ryan armor pieces really stood out here because the, the floor is so reflective. So I'm glad how that turned out. If you were watching this and your character was featured in it, just, um, I guess it, I wasn't really asking much of you to use your avatar, but thank you for letting me do it anyway. I could have, in, in all honesty, I could have just made a bunch of random characters myself but I appreciated people sending in their details. So at least I have something to work off because if I make a bunch of random characters, it's going to be much harder to remember those details. So yeah, uh, I'll quickly go over the monitor animations. So this is the Sparky's logo, uh, maybe a little bit too shiny. So that's why I had the glow going over the word then afterwards. Uh, is the animation here? I believe the animation is here. So yeah, it's just a kind of a shiny monitor, the panel coming together, and then you have the full gold coming over. And you might notice that it's down there. I, 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 I'm not great with Blender, so a lot of the time I just do stuff where I just do a really sharp keyframe from one location to the other, almost like teleporting. It, and then it's a transparent background, so I can just bring that image sequence onto Premiere or After Effects. So easily done. Not much more to say about it. You know, if I can do this, literally anybody else can. Just a final bit on the VFX for the video. So obviously I had scenes where a lot of avatars were superimposed in. I didn't want them just to be static shots, which is unfortunately what I ended up going with. I wanted to use a 
very smooth kind of dolly or tracking shot in Halo 3 and try to match that movement with green screen footage from Halo Reach, Halo 5, Halo 4, whatever. And I'll give some test footage here that I ended up scrapping. But the idea was just to have this smooth shot of all these different avatars from different Halo games. The problem was is that some of the frame rate was choppy between each take and it was already taking way too much time to put this stuff together. So I ended up scrapping. But that is Chewie's 5. Thank you for watching this behind the scenes, director's commentary, breakdown, and um, yeah, wash behind your ears.